Salamis. Um, so the Greeks have obviously really surprised the Persians so far, and this is the the kind of the the nail in the coffin for the Persians. So um, this one was fought at sea, and this is also the battle that the second 300 movie is based off. So so already, let's sum up wh where we're at. Okay, so the Persians win at Thermopylae, Leonidas dies, um, and the Greeks do well at Artemisium, um, but we don't really have a, a winner in that straight. Uh, but, so the Greeks retreat back to Salamis. Uh, we've got some evacuations happening in the city of Athens. Um, but, but not everyone evacuates, and as we've, we've spoken about, Xerxes and the Persians arrive at Athens and kill slash burn the city to the ground. They make it in a few days. So remember, Xerxes' whole plan was he wanted revenge on Athens for what they did, um, which was originally the revenge his father wanted to take, and Xerxes, you know, by his logic, he gets to take revenge on Athens. So... Um, the Greeks call another meeting. They've retreated back uh, towards southern Greece, uh, and they call a meeting, and they're divided. So your Pelop Peloponnesians, I should say, which includes your Spartans, they essentially want to build a wall at the Isthmus, which is a which is a small kind of parcel of land, um, which their plan is to hopefully stop the army coming further south. So they're essentially just, it's almost like a, a Operation Turtle plan. It's just go into your shell, knuckle down, stop them from getting getting um, any further in. Uh, and it's Themistocles, um, once again, uh, kind of convinces um, Eurybiades and the Spartans that they need to focus on the navy. They need to put their efforts in, not on the land, but uh, on the water. Um, and uh, so, but we'll get to how he does that in a second. Um, and supposedly... There is some dissent in Xerxes' camp. So what I mean by dissent is that not everyone agreed with how they should go about things. Um, Xerxes wants to just go all out. He wants to launch one big navy attack um, on the Greeks. And uh, one of the, the Greek women um, captains that is serving under him says, don't do it, don't take them on the ocean. Um, that's not the right way to go about it. Don't, don't fall for it. Let's not fight them at sea, um, which Xerxes... Uh, he quite respects Artemisia, according to Herodotus, but um, he's a little irritated that, once again, people are going against his him and what he thinks is, is the right way to go. So, pre-battle. So, again, Xerxes has to separate his army and his navy to continue from here. So, his ultimate strategy is already ruined. Uh... And as, as we've already spoken about in class, he can no longer uh, accomplish his other objectives with one. Um, so he needs one big assault, which ultimately becomes Salamis. We don't have completely reliable figures, um, but the Persians still have more fleet than like, more boats than the, the Greeks in their fleet, ultimately. Okay, they've, they've still got more numbers. Uh, and once again, Xerxes is not present. So he sets up his portable throne on a hillside to watch this unfold. So, to give you a couple of things that Themistocles does to get his own way yet again. So, uh, the Spartans want to retreat um, and defend the Spartan homeland. And, and Themistocles does a few things to make sure that he keeps the Spartans there. So, one, he argues that if they remain in their boats um, and they defend a narrow stretch, they can, they can get more results, as they did at Artemisium, as they did at Thermopylae. If you continue to, to um, defend the narrow straits, uh, you will essentially um, stop, the, stop the Persians who have the overwhelming numbers. He also argues for um, the people that are refugees in Salamis, and if we let them get any further, all of these Greeks are going to die. The other thing he does is he essentially says to Eurybiades, if you retreat from here... If you decide to leave us high and dry, we're done. We're like we're going to the Persians. That scares Eurybiades and the Spartans because obviously they know if it comes down to it, the Persians plus the Athenians, they are going to lose. So um, essentially, Themistocles essentially blackmails Eurybiades and the Spartans into um, into to remaining there to fight against the Persians. One more thing that he does, and this is once again. I wouldn't have thought this would have worked. He knew that the Spartans are toing and froing, going, oh, should we stay? Should we go? 
So he sends a secret message with his servant into the camp of the Persians. And he gets this servant to lie and say to the Persians, the Greeks are fighting, Spartans, you know, Spartans and the Athenians can't agree. And the Athenians, are, um, they're in Salamis and they're trying to evacuate whilst you're here. So he essentially, and the Persians then go, well, we've got to get the Athenians before they all get away. So Xerxes takes the bait and he falls for the trap of Themistocles. And what he also does is he attacks sooner. This means Sparta was on the fence on should we stay, should we go. But because Themistocles lies and is a bit of an ass, um, he, the Persians decide to attack. So the Spartans now just go, well, we've got to fight now. Here they come. Um, and that's essentially what happens. Um, so here's the battle. There's a map of it here. As you can see, the Greeks aren't facing them out in the open water. They're in the narrow corridor here. Okay, which stops the Persians using overwhelming numbers on them. Okay, um, we believe Xerxes watches from a throne on the mountain around here, and he essentially sees his army lose, according to Herodotus. Okay, um, so again, rather than just attacking from here, Xerxes sends some of his boats to try and go around, thinking that he's gonna. He remember he listened to Themistocles' lie, um, so his boats, even that he sends in here, aren't at full strength. Once again thanks to Themistocles. Um, so he goes into the narrow straits. The Greeks are lined up towards the coast, according to Herodotus. As the Persians get in, the Greeks wait, the Greeks wait, the Greeks wait, and essentially their knowledge of the winds and the seas near the coast of Greece, they wait for this big wind to change and the seas to change, and it gets behind them and gives them a big push towards the Persians, and they essentially take, catch the Persians off guard and sink a huge number of their ships, huge number. Um, they essentially rain carnage um, on the Persians um, because of this kind of battle tactic. So the, the Persians lose. Uh, and this is a humiliating um, loss for Persia, absolutely, absolutely humiliating. So again, Persia hadn't completely lost the war yet, but they decisively lost this battle. <clears throat> Xerxes retreats, he's going home. So he doesn't get stranded and get killed by the Greeks. But he leaves his nephew, Mardonius, um, or nephew cousin, to continue the war. Um, so Mardonius, remember, he's in northern Greece. They're going to wait it out for the winter in Greece. But now they do not have supplies from the navy. And once again, this is Greek morale is raised once more as a result of this, this amazing victory. This inspired the Greeks that um, you know, victory was definitely not, un well, not only possible, but, but within their grasp. 